Okay, so what you're about to look at is a chart. Um, and we went canoeing in. So backtrack, <laughs> I have been wanting. So when I was a little, when I was a young lad, and I wish I had a photo to show you of this, but I, I sadly do not. My mom and I went canoeing on uh, a river in Idaho near where we used to live. Um, I mean, maybe 30 or 40 times in, you know, two or three years on a canoe. And the entire, every time we went, it was, uh, if you've ever been to a water park, think of like a lazy river where it's, it's slow and low and shallow, you, shallow and, uh, kind of risk free. I'm not an adrenaline junkie, especially when it comes to water especially deep water. I yeah, would say that yeah. I have thalassophobia, but I'm not. Anyway, regardless, when it's we went- It's a lovely memory. When we went earlier in the video or early in part one or part, or whatever part I put it in, we went with Chris and Kirsten and Hunter and Rachel. It was at this, at this, uh, see, here's the chart here. See how high it is um, at the gauge? The water level. Is what it's, this is showing. It's at 10 feet uh, the first time we went. And this is at, uh, at just a spot where they measure it. And you can see on the same graph, it is measured from the first time we went, June 11th, to the last, to the second time we went, uh, August uh, 26th. At the very end, it's down to almost two feet, 2.84 feet. Uh, that's kind of where I remember it being yeah where it is a lazy river so enjoy this footage from our canoe trip so last time we came the water was at like peak for the entire year. And honestly, peak for like the last 10 years. This time, it was like here, the water. We were stepping into it right as this textured concrete started. And look how low it is now. Stepping into the sand. I can't believe this. Those docks were not in the water last time because all of this was underwater. <sighs> Tim and I are hanging out at this uh, lovely boat ramp here. <sighs> I think she's making some tea. <laughs> um, and we're gonna go. It is a great day though. We still got out really early. I think it's like 7 a.m. right now. Uh, the boys are dropping off the cars, taking care of the battery terminal stuff. <sighs> and the sky looks great. Oh, a little dark over there. They made it back. I think we're finally ready to go. We're off again. Keep an eye out the sandbar, please. Metal poles that are dragging 
driven into the rock. Somebody slammed rebar into it and pounded it in. There's a rope. And you, and you go all the way up. Whoa! Wow! Almost a hundred years. Like, you could go up and not even hit him, but the canoes would take <laughs> like, you. Know, how long that is. Yeah, someone will hit the canoe before We did it and we made it. Last ride with the canoes on tow. Hey, right. well, can't go on our flight because I made a mistake and booked my flight in Kevin's name. It's a long story. Back home, packing up, you know, the goods. Here we go, road trip. So that long story is, we went to the airport in Grand Junction and Kim was like, uh, I'm not sure, but I think the flight was booked in my husband's name twice, my name, Kevin Henner. It was, but because it was within an hour of the flight, they were like... Because it's a tiny airport, so Grand Junction, you show up, you know, like 20, 30 minutes before your flight. Literally, you, we walked in and we walked to the gate. There was no there line. There was one other person in the whole entire lobby <clears throat> area. And they were like, there's nothing we can do. It's within an hour <laughs> of the flight. And, and we had to be at... And there wasn't any other seats. That was like the only... Flight to or get us there. we could have bought, we could have spent a thousand dollars and and bought another ticket. Yeah, the gate. or spent less money and bought a ticket that was going to take eight hours with a to layover get from Grand Junction, from Grand Junction <laughs> to Las Vegas, which is like a forty-five minute flight. Yeah, yeah. Our, I think our other flight was like three hours because there was a small layover there too. But needless to say, it was a terrible time. <laughs> so we get there. They tell us there's nothing that we can do. We get back in the car. We drive, I'll put up a map. We drive from Grand Junction back to the Beck, load up our shit, drive back to Grand Junction to go on I-70 all the way to I-15, <laughs> down to Las Vegas, so we make a big L, upside down L. Here's that story. I'll cut back in when we tell you how freaking awesome the win. It was worth it. Oh my gosh. Dios mío, por qué? <laughs> so if we would have flown, we would have arrived like five hours ago. And well, we did. Have, I mean, granted, we did leave like three hours later from. That's true. That's like, true. We went back home. But we do have two and a half hours left of this drive because of this traffic now. So. Crazy. Road trip. This is crazy. <laughs> <sighs> We're in the big city. We made it. Hello. It was only like 10 hours later. Yeah, because the construction has been going on for years. <laughs> so annoying. Okay, closed down our next house. Out to breakfast. Well, while we were in Las Vegas, oh, I already <clears throat> forgot about that. A traveling notary came into our lo into our what, uh, literally hotel into our hotel room, room. <laughs> in the wind in Las Vegas, and we signed the closing documents on our new house, this house that we're actually in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was speaking, awesome. We should get this fireplace. It was a literal whirlwind. We signed and closed on this house, and I believe we got home and had one week to pack everything up and move out. Uh, so, it's, it's been a time. Mm -hmm. I remember very little of that month. <laughs> Las Vegas is super fun. We went to, it was a work retreat. Mm -hmm. We got to go to a club, um, which I'll put some shots up. Uh, I didn't know this, but at the time, at, and still now, it's the number one nightclub in Las Vegas. It's called... Excess? Excess. Uh, 
mind blowing. <laughs> it was it was so much fun. If For people who don't really go to nightclubs like that, <laughs> if you're into, it was real fun. If you're into drinking at all, if you're into partying at all, okay, if you're into music. spending twenty thousand dollars on one night, go We're not. go not to us. Club Excess. Well, it was a work retreat. But someone spent that money. <laughs> not us. But it was but super fun. Go there. It was incredible. Here's some images. We went to Brooklyn Bowl after the night after. Yeah, that, that one's was one a lot I of would fun. definitely recommend. That was super fun. It was uh, again. We got to see Big Gigantic, a cool jazz, electro jazz, and the CEO of her company, Homelight, DJed for like an hour and. <laughs> Which was actually really cool. Whether or not he was doing it for real, it was sick. So. If he was faking it, he did a fantastic job. If he was doing it for real, he did, <laughs> he did it even a fantastic more job. fantastic job. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was really cool. It, it was, was my great my my mind was blown. He went up there and he acted like he was not. He was like, oh, can we get like, how do I? Oh, like he acted like it. Was, I think he like maybe. Yeah, what's that called in like drag racing? Sandbagging. He was sandbagging for sure. Yeah, oh, for is real. This what this does, and he like made a bunch of weird noises, and then he just like went off. Yeah, so if you're into electronic music at all, it was really cool. It was entertaining. Oh, it was uh, incredible. But uh, it's uh, cool um, to see there's way more to Vegas than just like the strip and casinos. So oh, the little walkable area. If you're an anti-Vegas person, I implore you to look again. The little walkable area by the the Ferris wheel, that giant Ferris wheel, that's right where the entrance yeah, was. Yeah, I am. That little walkable strip where Broken Bull is. That was great. Uh, we, we will be vacationing there again. It was great. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was an awesome place. Very fun.